Hi darlings, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new sewing class for you prepared where I show you how to make a garment from beginning to the end. And today's garment is polo shirt like the one I'm wearing today and like the one you see behind me. I love polo shirt because the universal and classic pieces, they can be worn by women, men, children, anyone and they are perfect garment to have in your summer wardrobe. Even though making polo shirt might seem difficult at the beginning, I promise the process is very easy and smooth and you will have so much fun making your own polo shirt. So this class will contain two parts. In the first part of the video we will learn how to make our own pattern for the polo shirt to fit your own figure. And in the second part I will show you each and every step on how to assemble the garment. Before we move further to the video I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor of the sewing class, Kai Scissors. Kai scissors are very well known among professional seamstresses for their superior quality products that last lifetime. So Kai scissors have a very wide range of various scissors. So depending on what your needs are and what your budget is, you can find the right match for you that will give you long lasting precise results. So actually the first item that I was instructed to get when I went to the sewing school was in fact scissors. And even before buying a sewing machine, I do recommend you to first get a good pair of scissors for cutting your fabric because it will be a game changer for you. Kai scissors are made from hardened metal which means that they remain sharp and give you precise results and because of the sharpness of the blades your hand will not develop fatigue even if you're cutting for long periods of time. In today's video I will review the Kai scissors 5000 and 7000 professional range and I will link every item that you will see in this video in the description down below and make sure you check those products out if you're looking for long lasting high quality scissors. So thanks again for Kai Scissors for sponsoring the video and now let's start our class. So okay, we will start making our pattern for the polo shirt and if you've seen my sweatshirt making sewing class, the pattern base is made exactly the same way, just a little bit different ease. And later on when we will be cutting our pieces from the fabric, we will be cutting additional few pieces such as collar, cuffs and etc. And now we will do the base for our pattern. So here I have pattern paper and I will start by by creating the net for my pattern. So the beginning of the net is starting at the back. We will measure from the highest point of the shoulder which is here. I will just show it up close because we will be talking about this part a lot. So the highest shoulder point is here. And now we will measure from the highest shoulder point all the way where you want your polo shirt to end. So in my case, this number is 58 centimeters. So at this line, which will be my back line, I will mark a line which will be 58 centimeters in total. So like this. Now on this back center line we will mark a few more measures. So I want you first to mark the armhole depth. So the armhole depth is measured from the highest shoulder point all the way to where your armhole starts. So basically when you will be measuring yourself I want you to take the ruler put it beneath your arm here so at the beginning of your armhole right and just put it like this so that you visually get this line which will be your armhole depth line and then measure the distance from the highest shoulder point going down straight line to this armhole depth so here usually for women this measure is around 22 centimeters in my case it is exactly 22 centimeters so from this point I will mark down 22 centimeters now second measure that we will be putting on this line will be the length from the highest shoulder point 
all the way down to your waistline. In my case, this measure is 41 centimeters. So I will just go ahead and measure from this point right here down 41 centimeters. Okay, great. So now that we have all these points covered, we will now put a half of our bust width, including ease, on this horizontal line. So now I want you to take your calculator or you can count in your head, doesn't matter. So basically my bust width is 86 centimeters and I will be adding a little bit of ease. So how much ease to add highly depends on you. Basically the fabric we are working to Today is stretch meaning that you can add less ease because the fabric will allow you to move freely however the nature of polo shirt is not very tight fitting so in my case I will add four centimeters of ease but again you can add more or less depending on your preference so now I have 90 centimeters and I will divide this number by two and now I have 45 centimeters so from each point here I will mark 45 centimeters however I need to make sure that each line goes by 90 degree angle compared to this line so this is why I have my 90 degree ruler it comes very handy so I will just mark very short lines at exactly 90 centimeter angle like this and now from this line I will mark 45 centimeters and I will do exactly the same with every single line here so coincidentally my paper is exactly 45 centimeters And now that I have marked 45 centimeters, I will connect all these lines with a straight line. Okay, great. So now one more step left to do in our net. I want you to take the number that we had, which is 45 and divide by two. And now we get 22.5 centimeters. So now from this line, on each of our lines, let's mark 22.5 centimeters. Like this. So now we have divided our net into halves. So this will be the back part of our shirt and this will be the front part of our shirt. Now let's start working on the back part. So now I want you to take your measuring tape again and measure your shoulder width which will be from this part from the end of your shoulder all the way to the end of your other shoulder. Again this measure is highly individual for each and every one. For me it's 39 centimeters and we will need the half of that measure. So in my case my shoulder width is 39 centimeters and I will divide it by two and now I have 19.5 centimeters. So on this and this line I will mark 19.5 centimeters and connect them with the line. All right. Now that we have done our shoulder line, now I want you to do your back neckline. And to do that, we will mark seven centimeters from this side to this side. So I will just go ahead and mark those seven centimeters. And then we will mark 2.5 centimeters down. So like this. And now we will just join these with a beautiful curved line. 
So I usually make my patterns with the pencil. So if I don't like how my neckline looks like from the first try, I'll just erase it and draw it again. But basically pencil is invisible when working on camera. This is why I have my big, big marker today. I don't usually do my patterns with this thick marker. So, okay, never mind. Now that we marked our neckline, I want you to take your measuring tape and measure from the shoulder end all the way to the center back of your waistline. So you would take your measuring tape and just put it like this across your body and measure from the end of your shoulder all the way to the back center of the waistline. For me, my measure is 42 centimeters. So now I will take the, the ruler and I will place it at the center back waistline and on this shoulder line I will place the 42 centimeters. So again, from this back center of the waistline to the shoulder line we will be marking the measured measure. In my case it's 42 centimeters, so like this. I will mark it as a dot. So now we will create our shoulder. For our shoulder we will just connect this dot with this dot. Okay, it's going beautiful so far. Now we will create our back armhole. And to do that, I want you to take a few measures. So from this line, I want you to mark three centimeters and then seven centimeters. So again, I will just go ahead and measure three centimeters and seven centimeters. So now I want you to measure your back width. So back width is measured at the widest back piece. So from this line, you would measure to this mark. So this is the widest part of your back, okay? In my case, my back width is 36 centimeters and I will divide it by two because I need only half of this measure. We are working only on half of our back at the time and it's 18 centimeters. So now at the seven centimeter line, from this point, I want you to measure half of your back width. So in my case, it was 18 centimeters. So from this point all the way to here, here we have 18 centimeters, right? And I'm marking this point at the seven centimeter line. We'll go ahead and we will connect this point with this point, then this point and this point. It's very handy if you have a French ruler, which is a curved ruler like this. So if you don't have a lot of experience working with creating armholes, with creating curves, it's just such a good tool to have because you can easily and accurately draw everything. So this is how our back armhole looks like. Now at the back, we still have two measures to do. So one is the measure of your waistline, which is here, and we will put one fourth of your waistline plus ease. So now I want you to take your waistline measure. In my case, it's 70 centimeters and I will add ease. Now, how much ease to add depends on you. However, I really, really like when my polo shirts are pretty loose uh, at the waistline. So I will add 10 centimeters which is a lot and now we have 80 centimeters and we will divide it by four because we are working on only fourth of our garment at the time and now we get 20 centimeters so again from this measure to this we will measure 20 centimeters and now here where our shirt finishes where the hemline is you want to measure the hip circumference at that position so basically if you finish your shirt somewhere here you want to measure how your hips are wide in this area add a little bit of ease and then divide by four in my case it will be exactly the same point as the center here for you it might be a little bit different less or more depending on your figure so now we will go ahead and connect all these three points with a straight ruler 
so like this all is almost finished with our back however one more thing left to do so naturally in nature we don't have that kind of sharp corners in our figures everything is a little bit of smooth you can take your curved ruler like this and just create a very soft line like this so yeah we added a little bit more of that space in the waistline but we also created this beautiful non-sharp corner right here okay so now we are finished with our back and let's move to the front part so we will start doing the front part same way we finished the back so again let's measure our waist which was 20 centimeters right and just like we did at the back we will connect this point with this point with this point and again we will just soften that very sharp line like this okay so now let's move up okay so we will start by creating the neckline so the neckline at the front is created similar way how we did in the back so at the back we mark seven centimeters in width so we will mark again seven centimeters in width in the front part as well and now from this point down we will mark eight centimeters because the front neckline is deeper than the back neckline if you have the curved ruler this is fantastic to do it with it very fast very efficient and beautiful curve now same as at the back we measured the shoulder width correct and it was 19.5 centimeters so we will just mark from this line 90.5 centimeters also which will be our shoulder line in the front as well and we will just mark this little line right here maybe we can do it all the way down so like this now i want you to measure the distance at the back piece so from this point to this point okay in my case it's four centimeters and in the front piece we want the shoulder to be a little bit lower so we will add one centimeter so this measure was four centimeters plus one centimeter we have five centimeters in total so like this now we'll just go ahead and connect this point with the top of the shoulder now same way that we did in the back I want you to take and measure seven centimeters from this line on this line seven centimeters and then 1.5 or two maybe let's do two centimeters so okay one more measure that you need to take is to take the front width and the front width is measured from this point to this point so my front measure is 30 four centimeters divided by two because we are working only on a half of the front pattern at the time and now we get 17 centimeters and from this line at the seven centimeters mark i will just mark from this point 17 centimeters right like this and now exactly the same way like we did in the back we will connect this point with this point then with this point and this point like this and that's it for our front and back pieces so when you will be cutting your pattern out of the paper you will cut this line this line like this like this like this like this and you will get your back piece and from the front piece exactly the same way you will cut here 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 and here okay now that the basic front and back pieces are finished let's move to our sleeve okay so for the sleeve piece you will need again a piece of paper smaller this time because we are making a very short and small sleeve so now we will start by measuring the arm circumference in this place so i want you to take your measuring tape and just really measure all around your arm making sure that the end of your tape is touching the armhole when you will be measuring this measure don't make it too tight 
tight you want to give it a little bit of ease a little bit of flexibility for each and every one of us depending on your arm the measure will be different my personal measure is 30 centimeters so I will now go ahead and draw 30 centimeters on the page here okay so 30 centimeters and while I still hold my ruler in place I will divide this in two so I will mark at 15 centimeters here so now we will create our top part of the sleeve so how tall this part will be depends on the armhole depth that you measure in the beginning of this pattern making part when you measure from the highest point of your shoulder all the way to the line where your armhole begins so in my case it was 22 centimeters so I will take those 22 centimeters, I will divide it by 2 and now I get 11 centimeters and I will add 2 centimeters so I get 13 centimeters in total. From the center line that I marked I will mark 13 centimeters up like this and we can just draw at the top a very short supportive line okay very well so now i want you to divide this piece in two so it was 13 centimeters so 6.5 centimeters right like this now let's measure this piece in my case it was 15 centimeters we will divide it by two and add one centimeter so my measure from this to the middle was 15 centimeters i will divide it by two I get 7.5 and then I add one centimeter so we get 8.5 centimeters and I will just go ahead and create 8.5 centimeter measure here so from the center point to this side 8.5 centimeters and I will do the same with another side so from the center point to this side we will create 8.5 centimeter mark okay beautiful so now that you have those finished I want you to connect this point with this point with a straight line so I am making sure that I'm connecting this point with this point and I'm just drawing a line all the way to the top at another side exactly the same okay now this is looking very triangulish but stay with me we will create our uh, sleeve shortly now we have this line which is divided in two and i want you to divide each segment in half you don't have to be very accurate here but just you can do it visually so this and this line dividing by two visually something here and exactly the same on this side as well so from this point to this point dividing by two so we get something like this and from this part to this part also like this okay so now i will take my short ruler because we're working with very small measures so we will start with this point so from this point to the inside of our sleeve we will mark 0 0.6 millimeters so from this point to the inside of the sleeve we are marking 0. 6 centimeters okay now at this point to the outside of the sleeve we will mark one centimeter like this so from this point to the outside of the sleeve one centimeter now let's move to another side and from this point to the outside of the sleeve 0 0.8 centimeters from this point to the inside of the sleeve 1.5 centimeters i do understand if you are confused just hold on we will soon create our sleeve and now i want you to connect this dot with this dot then to the middle here then from this point to this mark and then to this mark okay so it will look like this i am again grabbing my french curved ruler and i'm connecting this point with this point then from this point to the middle of our line like this then from the middle of the line i will go to this point and from this point i will go to the top mark all right this is a very beautiful curve isn't it and now let's do exactly the same with our other part
Okay, so all the curves already created. I'll just show you up close. It's looking so, so beautiful. You will be cutting all those beautiful curves out. Now, final piece in our sleeve making process is to add the length to the sleeve. So basically, you can add how much length you want. In my case, I will just add like three centimeters. So from this line, I will mark three centimeters and I will connect all points, creating a beautiful parallel line. And from this point, I will just go with a little bit of angle here and exactly the same way here. I'm going with a little bit of angle because I like when this part is a little bit closer to the body. If you want to make your sleeve looser, you can go just straight down without that angle and it will be a little bit freer and a little bit looser. So that's it. Our pattern is finished and now we cut all the pieces out from paper and then start cutting it from the fabric. So now that we have our pattern ready, it's time to cut it out from the fabric. So one very important step that I already did before this video. So I always say this, but it's extra important when we are working with stretchable fabrics. So prepare your fabrics before cutting it. So what do I mean? This means that before cutting my fabric, I treat it the same way I will treat my garment. So if I'm planning on putting it to the washing machine, to the dryer and iron it, I do exactly the same with the fabric and it prevents that very unpleasant incident when you put your freshly made garment to the washing machine for the first time and you take it out shrunk. So basically when we're doing those steps before cutting the fabric, we are avoiding that unpleasant situation and we are preventing the fabric from shrinking in the future. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you to not skip this step because you later might regret this. So one more tip about cutting the fabrics. I know that you, like myself, probably like to cut fabrics on the floor. Somehow it's very convenient, but I do recommend you to find a higher surface, such as a dining room table, a desk, or something similar that is elevated from the floor. And so basically when you're cutting your fabric, you don't have to bend your back because in the long run, it's not healthy for your back and you might experience back pains. So just to avoid this, take a higher surface like a desk and cut the fabric on it. Trust me, I am speaking from my own experience. I did have those unpleasant back pains and I just want to warn you to avoid it at all costs. So I want to show you what we will be cutting our fabric with today. And in my hands, you see the Kai 7000 series scissors, in particular, the eight inch professional scissors. So the Kai 7000 series is the highest lineup of Kai scissors. And these beauties are definitely made to last you a lifetime if you take good care of it. So all Kai scissors are made from hardened metal, which creates those extra sharp blades. And even if you're cutting for a long period at the time, your hand will not get fatigued. The scissors run through the fabric like through a butter and the whole process is truly effortless. What I also like about these shears is that they're cut on the angle. So meaning when I take my scissors and start cutting, the blade is at the surface and my hand and is a little bit on the comfortable angle. So when I'm cutting, I don't have to lift the fabric. So meaning I get very, very accurate cutting results. Additionally, the handle of these scissors are made ergonomically. So you can just take like this, cut for a very long period at the time. So basically with this handle, you can just grab your scissors like this and cut it for a very long period at a time. And it will be very, comfortable and your hand will not get tired. So I will link these scissors at the bottom and I highly advise you to check it out because these beauties are definitely, definitely great tool to have in your sewing toolbox and these could serve you as your main sewing scissors for a very, very long time. 
So now it's time to cut our fabric and the right side of the fabric is facing upwards. So now I will take the edge of the fabric and I will just simply fold it a little bit. So once the fabric is folded, we will put our pattern on it and we will just simply draw around our pattern. Now you might be surprised why I'm using white chalk to mark my white fabric, but actually it's the safest and the best way to mark your fabric, even if it's white chalk. So I don't like to use colored chalk because sometimes depending on the manufacturer of these chalks, sometimes the chalk, if it's colored, it may not be as easily removable from the finished garment as the white chalk. So I just always use white one. And trust me, it is visible on the fabric, even if it's white. So on the camera, it might be very invisible, but with the naked eye, in reality it is visible just enough for you to cut it so once we went around our pattern it's time to cut it out and for the seam allowance i am adding one centimeter from each side everywhere and at the bottom i will be adding two and a half centimeters so that i can just make the beautiful folded hemline so i will take my high scissors and just start cutting In the middle of the neckline make a small notch so that later we can find our middle easily. So when you're cutting the fabric make sure that one hand is pressing the fabric so that it does not move, does not slide and you get those really accurate cutting results. It's such a pleasure to work with these Kai scissors. They are running through the fabric so effortlessly and so smoothly. It's just oh, such a nice experience. So the front piece is cut out from the fabric and now it's time to cut the back part exactly the same way. So once the front and the back fabric pieces are cut out, it's time to cut our sleeve. So again, I have folded my fabric and we will be cutting both pieces of our sleeve at one time. So I will just simply go ahead and cut around it. Again, our seam allowance for the sleeve is one centimeter. When you're cutting, use the hand that is not with scissors to just press the fabric so that it does not move and you get really really accurate cutting results. So like this. Also you can just mark the middle of the of the sleeve here with a notch it will be easier for you to later add that sleeve so now one more thing i want you to do with the sleeve so here is the length of the sleeve that we cut out and next to it i want you to cut the cuff of the sleeve because at the end of the sleeve we will be adding a short strip of a cuff it will give extra longevity for the sleeve and it just looks so 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 pretty so in the final result i want that cuff to be two centimeters on the fold which means four centimeters in total plus a centimeter for each side for seam allowance so six centimeters in total so here from from this edge I'm marking six centimeters and I will just go ahead and connect it with the line we will be cutting both cuffs at the same time. This is why we are cutting on the fold. Now, we want our cuff to be a slightly shorter than our sleeve because we want it to give that extra little support. 
So if you're doing this with a rib knit, if you have a rib knit available, then of course it's even better. But if not, do same as I, cut the cuff from the same fabric, just a little bit shorter than the sleeve. Here is one side of the sleeve, so I will cut it here. And to make it a bit shorter, so the original length of the sleeve is here, so I will cut my cuff maybe somewhere here to get that little, little support. And we already added our seam allowance here, so no need to add it. And just simply cut through this line. So once these parts are cut out, I will just trim it so we won't need this anymore. I want you to cut the neck band. So basically, if you're fortunate enough to have the neck band already ready from rib knit, that's fantastic. If not, I will show you how to do it from the same fabric. So you will need again your pattern pieces. I want you to place them together like this. And I want you to measure this neckline. So just simply run the measuring tape around it. So in my case, it's 21 centimeters. 21 centimeter on the fold. So this is exactly where I will mark it on the fold. 21 centimeters plus one centimeter for seam allowance. So 22 centimeters in total for the width of our neckband. And now it depends on you how wide you want your neckband to be. So in my final result, I want the neckband to be six centimeters width. So cut on fold, it will be 12 centimeters. And again, adding one centimeter from each side for seam allowance. So 14 centimeters in total. So from this line, I will move 14 centimeters. Again, we have already added our seam allowance, so no need to add it here, just cut through the lines. Here is your neckband, it's ready, you can set it aside. And now we will be cutting that additional extra piece of fabric that we will add in the wrong side of the garment when we will be attaching our neckband to the main fabric of the shirt to give that extra longevity to our shirt and to give that extra comfort when you will be wearing it. So that piece of fabric we have to cut four centimeters width in total and same length as our neckline maybe a centimeter or one longer. I will just mark four centimeters from this line. Again, I will connect it with my ruler and I will just simply So once this piece is cut out, set it aside next to the neckline and we will be kneading them at the same time. So okay, very, very last piece that we need to cut out is the front placket. And for this placket, we will need to cut two pieces. So uh, in the final result, I want my placket to be three centimeters wide and 15 centimeters length. So I will just again fold my fabric and I will be cutting both pieces at the same time. So again, the logic is as follows. So in the final result, I want the placket width to be three centimeters, meaning we will be folding it. So I need at least six centimeters. And also I need to add one centimeter from each side for seam allowance. So total eight centimeters. So just from this edge here where the fold is, I will mark eight centimeters. and just create that beautiful, beautiful line like this. Now for the length, I mentioned that I want it to be 15 centimeters and I will just add maybe extra five centimeters for extra seam allowances. So I will cut 20 centimeters in total. Here we don't have to be that accurate about the length as long as the length of the part we are cutting out is significantly longer than the detail we will need. And I will show you why when we will be adding our placket in. So. 
cut it out again seam allowance is already included so I'm just cutting through my chawl lines now I will just open it and I see here the fold line and I will just cut through that line so now I want you to take both these placket pieces and I want you to add interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric on both pieces and once you are adding your interfacing I want you to fold each blanket in half so that the right side of the fabric is facing upwards and just press it beautifully so once you have finished cutting your fabric I want you to take the cover for your scissors so the one I'm using today is this one from Kai Scissors. So this one will protect your scissors blade and make sure that the scissors do not open up when they are not used and the blades remain undamaged. Also one more important thing if you want your scissors to last you a long time you have to dedicate scissors for each specific purpose. So for example if I dedicate these scissors for cutting fabric I will cut only fabric with it and I will not cut paper I will not cut plastic with it so why this is important so when you're getting your scissors they are very sharp but if you're using it to switch from one material to another material it does damage the sharpness and it makes the blades dull so make sure that once you dedicate the scissors for the specific purpose you only use those scissors for that purpose and this is especially important when you are cutting fabric because if you have dull scissors the entire process will be very difficult so maintain the sharpness of your scissors by protecting the blades when you're not using it and also do not switch between the materials so keep those scissors sharp okay so now let's move to the sewing machine so now we have moved to our sewing machine and I will show you what little preparation I did behind the scenes. So first of all, I took the front piece of my shirt, right side is facing upwards and I marked the placket. So my placket was 15 centimeters length, three centimeters in width. So don't forget that you also have one centimeter seam allowance here so from seam allowance down 15 centimeters to the side three centimeters and 15 centimeters again till the seam allowance and i placed it exactly on the middle of my shirt so just up close a little bit you can see the chalk marking so this will help us install the placket exactly on the middle of our shirt so additionally i did another step so i took both placket pieces i interfaced them folded in half and then i overlocked one side of the placket and i did exactly the same with another placket so interfaced folded in half ironed it and then overlocked one side so now that we have this preparation ready we will start adding our placket and to do so first you have to make sure that the line that you marked here goes exactly through the middle of your foot meaning this is exactly where the needle will go and will create a seam so like this then you will take your placket piece and remember we added one centimeter seam allowance here so we will make sure that our needle goes one centimeter from the side so you can just take the measuring tape in this case if you're not feeling sure and just measure the distance from the side to the needle so yes exactly one centimeter as i need and also make sure that this entire line is placed equally on the marked line so i know that this might sound difficult if you are not feeling very sure that you are able to keep this at the same distance all the time you can just take your pins and pin it here if you feel more secure that's absolutely fine and now we will start sewing very slowly secure the beginning of the stitch and just continue to sew you can just sometimes if you want to check if you're going exactly through the line that you need to go
Now that we are moving towards the end, make sure you're not going below the marked line. Exactly, you want to hit it exactly at that spot. Maybe one more stitch and then secure it and cut the thread. So this is how this line looks like, right? Don't worry that here we have a lot of fabric left. We will later trim it down, don't worry, like this. And now it's time to add another side of the placket. And we will add it exactly the same way, just, of course, to the other side. Again, we are taking the edge, which is not overlapped, lacing it on the seam. Make sure the needle goes through the chalked line and then place this piece of fabric here. And just make sure that it's equally the same. If you're not feeling that you can go easily without any pins, just pin it, it's okay, whatever works for you. Later when you have more practice, you will be able to do it without any pins. Now continue till almost the end and now very important part. So here we have the mark where our stitch ended and we need to make sure that our stitch at this side also ends at exactly the same point. So let's continue and let's keep an eye on it. Okay, great. So this is how our placket is looking so far. So now we will need to cut through our placket and turn it into the wrong side. And to do it, we will need our scissors. And for this task, I will be using the Kai Scissors 5000 series. So as you can see, these scissors in particular are a bit smaller than the ones I used previously. So these ones are 5.5 five inch in length versus the first ones I used for cutting the entire pattern out were eight inch scissors. So the smaller scissors will give us that more precision and more accuracy. However, they do still have that extra power and extra smoothness when it comes to cutting. And this is exactly what we will need because we will need to cut very, very accurately. So same as with 7000 series, 5000 series are made from the hardened steel, which means that they will last you very long and the blades will remain sharp for a very, very long time. Also, this series is on a little cheaper side than the previous ones that we've seen. So if you're on the budget, check out 5000 series because this might be something for you. So now let's put these beauties to the test. So we will take our placket. I really hope you are seeing everything on the screen. Just fold it, yes, like this. So now we will start cutting from the top. And here I will be trimming this seam allowance just a little bit, maybe in half. And I will cut it three centimeters till the finish line. So let's start. So this part in the placket is the most important one because you really, really want that accuracy in cutting. So now we have about three centimeters left till the finish and I will just come up close to the camera so that you can see. Here is the last stitch of my seam and here is where I'm so far, yes? So now I will just turn my scissors and point them to the last stitch and just cut making sure that I'm as close to this stitch as possible without damaging this. So this is why we need those smaller scissors and where we still need that sharpness and that precision because this cut is quite difficult to manage with big scissors and it's almost impossible to do with scissors that are dull. So make sure that you're using sharp scissors and take smaller ones because it will be easier to do it. So now we can just clip this seam allowance till the end and now we will have to do the same with the other side so we are cutting about again about half of our seam allowance and we will finish about three to two centimeters till the end and again take your scissors and point it to the last stitch 
and cut as close as possible to it without damaging it. So if you damage a seam in this part it will start to fall apart and it will be very difficult to correct this mistake so try not to damage the seam so that it does not start to fall out and I will just trim this off. Now that we have this piece ready so I want you to take this part and fold it to the inside of the garment then depending if either it's a women's shirt or a men's shirt you know that the placket on the men's shirt is on the opposite side than women's so I am making myself these shirts so I will fold this line here and then I will take this one fold it and push it inside so that it's on the top of the other placket so it's already starting to look very very good I will just turn it here make sure that everything is pushed neatly and if you've done everything correctly you have a very sharp edges here so basically each should be 90 degree angle I will not show it up close because it's not yet secured so I don't want to ruin it so now we will do a very very small stitch here to secure everything in place so be very careful make sure that the edges are beautiful 90 degree angles right just make that short short seam one millimeter from this side so here is how our placket looks so far it's actually very very beautiful look at those sharp corners now it's time for us to move to the overlock so now that we have moved to our overlock first of all I have to mention that I'm using a four thread overlock because this time we will be using our overlock for a few carrying seams meaning that they will have to really really carry the strength and elasticity so that's why we need four threads usually if you are only doing overlock for the seam allowance then you can use only three uh, threads that's okay but in this particular case I do recommend you to use all four thread overlocks so now the first seam that we will do is actually our placket and we will just turn it wrong side here and here is that whole hot mess that we pushed through and we just going to cut it and overlock it at the same time a little bit below the seam that we made so just make sure that everything is nicely pushed to this side that you want to keep and everything that you want to cut is on this side so like this so here how it will look like so now before moving further one more thing we need to do with our placket is to mark the middle here so I will just go ahead and fold it in half so that I know where my middle is right this is in half I'm again using the small 5000 Kai scissors because I need accuracy which comes from small scissors and yet I need the power of Kai scissors because I really need to push it through a few layers so I marked the middle and then I need to mark the same middle on the other placket so to do it I will just put it and again make a small cut so like this so really these small scissors are very very powerful and they are able to push through so many layers it is impressive and because they are very short they are much easier to navigate and much easier to get that precision so now that our placket is ready we will start doing our shoulders and for the shoulders we will take the front piece the right side is facing upwards then we will take the back piece and we will just put right sides together we will make sure that all the edges are accurately the same and then we will just do a overlock seam now when you're working with overlock it's important that you do not stretch out the fabric you just kind of let the fabric run naturally through it so don't stretch it out don't pull the fabric just let it slide through the overlock And 
and we will do the same with another shoulder. So if your fabric has distinct right and wrong sides, so make sure that both right sides are facing each other. So here is how our second shoulder looks like so far. So before moving back to the sewing machine, I want you to do one more thing for me. So take the neckband piece like this. So here is the right side. I'm folding it in half and I will just overlock quickly this short edge. Again, don't pull the fabric, let it naturally flow through the overlock. The polo shirt fabric has a tendency to really stretch out if you're pulling it while sewing. So just really, really make sure that you're not pulling it when it's not needed. And so here is how our one edge looks like. And I want you to do exactly the same with another edge. So now that both of your edges are finished, just simply turn it around. And because we made that nice 90 degree angle, here we have it as well. So now I want you to go ahead and just iron this entire neckband and then I will meet you at the sewing machine. So now we are back to our sewing machine and we will do a quick few seams. So now that our garment is facing right side up, I want you to take the shoulder part. So here is the front of our shirt and here is the shoulder line. So now I want you to push all of the seam allowance to this side and do a top stitching here about one, two millimeters from the side of the edge. So let me just show you how to do it. Here is the front of our shirt. Here is the shoulder line and the entire seam allowance is pushed to this side. So the seam allowance is pushed to the back. And now just do a quick seam. One, two millimeters from the side. So what this seam will give us, it will ensure that our overlock shoulder seam does not roll out all the time. It will give extra durability to the shoulder seam and it will just look beautiful. Now that you have a result like this, a wavy seam, don't worry, give it a little bit of press, give it a little bit of steam and it will quickly fall into place. Now do exactly the same with another shoulder, push the seam allowance to the back side, iron the shoulder seams and I will meet you at the overlock. So we have switched to our overlock and before continuing to install our neckband I just wanted to show you the shoulders. So remember how wavy they were so with a little bit of steam with a light pressing they are smooth and very clean. So remember this lesson uh, forever if you work with stretchable fabrics and you overstretch them and get that wavy wavy seam don't get upset just try to iron it give it a little bit of steam and I, I think in most cases it will just fall into place and look beautiful. So okay now it's time to add our neckline and neckband. So we will do a lot of things at once so I want you to really pay attention. So now I will take one side of my placket like this. So this is the right side of the garment. Yes. So I will take my placket, I will open it and I will fold it to another side and I will just match those notches that I did here like this. Now I want you to take your neckband which is already prepared and ironed and I want you to add it at the middle between those two layers like this and the beginning of the collar should be here right where the notch is. So put it like this between the layers right and then I want you to take that long neckband piece fold it in half like this and just put it on the top like this 
So we will start attaching our collar, our neck band, and we will start sewing and matching everything while we are sewing. So I know this part might seem a little bit different. If you want, you can pin it. If you want, you can stitch it lightly by hand before sewing. For me personally, it's a bit easier to do it on the go when I'm overlocking, but it's definitely, definitely up to you. So now that we have everything in place, right so our color is in between the placket and then on top here we have our neckband piece and I will start overlocking and I will start from this edge so really be careful and when you will be sewing I want you to really match all of the edges from the color, from the neckband piece, from the main fabric so that everything is in one line and that you are overlocking through all the layers. It is very important not to rush this step so basically do like I do, work five centimeters at a time Then again, adjust everything so that everything is in one smooth, nice line and then continue to overlap. Now once we went through the last shoulder line, it's time to match again our color with the notches here, right? So the end of the color is at the notch and then take it, fold it again, just like we did in the beginning, match those notches together and then continue to sew. So this part of my neck band is a little bit longer than I want it to be, so I'm just going to trim it like this and then continue to sew, making sure that this seam, this fold here goes 90 degree angle from your seam. Okay, that was quite difficult, wasn't it? So, but I assure you the result will be worth it. So now let's take that corner and just turn it. Oh, how beautiful, how beautiful it's looking already. And let's do the same at another side. I'll just cut those unnecessary threads off and turn it. This is really, really so beautiful and we can take a look how our color is looking now so it's oh so pretty and now let's move to the sewing machine so now we moved back to sewing machine and we have a few final stitches left to do which is to attach this neck band securely to the place and to do so first of all we have to take our shirt right side up then we have to push that neck band for this moment to the color side and then we will be stitching one millimeter from this edge so that we are securing the color seam in place. So pay attention that this neckband piece is pushed to the side. We are not attaching it at the moment. So just start a few millimeters away from the blacket line and then one millimeter from the side, right? We will do a stitch. When you're sewing, make sure that the fabric is not rolled like this, but it's nicely pushed and the edge is very clean and very sharp. Thank you. 
So once we've done that stitch, see how beautiful it looks like. I want you to take this shirt from the wrong side this time. Take this neck band piece and just roll it and we will be stitching something about one millimeter from the side, attaching this piece to the bodice of the shirt and just make sure again that this piece is not rolled like this but it's neatly pressed here so that it's sharp edge and beautiful looking. Again we will start from the edge of the placket and we'll sew all around it. Again, you're not in a hurry, don't have to rush through this. Just make sure that it's beautifully folded and that you are creating a nice looking seam. So here is how the attached neckband looks like from the wrong side of the garment and from the right side of the garment it looks like this. So the best thing that I like about this that it secures and covers that overlock seam and it actually gives such a nice feeling when you're wearing the shirt and also it does protect the neckline from stretching out in the future so it will last you longer. Now the last thing that we need to do before we are moving towards our sleeves. So these sides of the plackets from the inside are still open so we will now cover them and to do so we will take our shirt right side up, let's push it like this and we will start sewing from this edge one millimeter. So we will be securing that edge, it will not be peaking, it will not be opening, it will stay securely neatly inside. make sure that you're not accidentally stitching this side to this side it might happen so just make sure that it's pushed a little bit okay and continue to sew till the end and when you reach the end I want you to go below a few millimeters just a few stitches like this. If you want you can go more, it doesn't matter. Now lift the foot while the needle is pushed in the inside of the fabric and rotate it by 90 degrees. Now it's a good time to put the plaquettes together and with that 90 degree angle I want you to sew till this edge, okay? So one more stitch. Okay, now again rotate by 90 degrees and then again same as with the other side create a seam one millimeter side from this seam. So here is how our placket and the collar looks like. Of course it needs ironing, it needs pressing, but it's looking so beautiful and it's looking so so clean both from the outside, both from the inside. So really really lovely piece. So the last thing that I will add will be the buttonholes here and here, but I like to add my buttonholes at the very very last stage of the garment making. So I will We'll leave it for the finish and now I will move to the overlock and I will start attaching my sleeves. So now it's time to add our sleeves. So again our garment is right side up. We are taking the sleeve. This one will go here. Now I will pin the top to the shoulder line and I will simply go ahead and attach the sleeve to the bodice. If you want you can pin all around together. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I just go ahead and add it as it is. So it's really really up to you how to do this part. 
If you feel comfortable just sewing it as it is, go ahead, do that. So this method is adding the sleeve while our sides of the garment is not attached. So there are different ways to attach the sleeve. Sometimes you want to first attach the sides, then add the sleeve. But in this case, when we're working with stretchable fabrics, I do like to first insert the sleeve and then attach the sides. But then of course, it's always a up to you how to do this part. So simply I will just go ahead and overlock these edges and while I'm sewing I'm just making sure that the sleeve sides are all nicely aligned together. Of course, remove the pin, never overlock through a pin. It's a big, big, big no. So here is how our sleeve looks like attached from the wrong side and from the right side it looks like this. Again, we will press it and make sure that this looks beautiful and very clean and then repeat the same with another sleeve. So once both sleeves are attached and we are still in front of our overlock, a few more things that I want you to do. So first take the hem of your garment, either the back or the front, it doesn't matter and I want you to overlock this edge. So once one side is finished, do exactly the same to another one. And then I want you to iron the hemline and iron the sleeves and then meet me at the sewing machine. So okay, now we're switching back to our straight stitch machine and we will do our hemming. So for the hemline, we left 2.5 centimeter seam allowance. So I placed my magnet here exactly 2.5 centimeters from my needle so that I have this as a navigator. I find it easier when it comes to sewing long straight stitching. So the garment is wrong side up. I am taking my hemline and I am folding it so that I get that nice 2.5 centimeter hemline, right? So like this. Again, if you feel more comfortable, you can first pin this entire hemline then sew. For me, it's a bit easier to just fold as I sew, but of course it's up for you. So really notice how the magnet is allowing me to just simplify the entire sewing process. I don't have to think a lot about the seam. The magnet is doing a lot of the work here and just helping me navigate. The important thing here is not to overstretch the fabrics. So don't be in a hurry. Let the fabric run naturally through the sewing machine. And do exactly the same with another hemline. So it might be a little bit counterintuitive for you to do first hemming and then only attaching the sides. But actually polo shirts always have those slits here at the sides. And once we are finished that, we will start doing it. So this is why we are finishing our hemming before attaching the sides. If you have a cover lock, for example, or if you have a sewing machine that has double needle function, you can do for this hemline the same thing. I am doing the best that I can with the resources that I have, which is overlock any single needle straight stitch machine. 
So once the hemline is finished from the right side it looks like this, from the wrong side it looks like this. Now I want you to press the seam and I will need you a little bit later. Oh one more thing, so before we're switching again to the overlock I want you to take those cuffs that we did in the beginning of the video when we were cutting our fabric and I want you to take one cuff, fold it in half and just do a short seam here, one centimeter for seam allowance as usual, right? So when you will go now to your ironing board, to your iron, I want you to press this part as well. So this part you will press open like this, then you will go ahead and fold it in half and just nicely press it, fold it in half. So now it's time to do our sides and we're back to our overlock. So our garment is wrong side up and now we will do some pinning. So take the armpits and pin them together and then pin the sides as well. Make sure that the edges match. Use as many pins as you feel comfortable with. Might be a few, it might be a lot, whatever works for you. So this is how one side looks pinned and now I want you to also pin another side so that we have both sides ready and we can roll both sides through the overlock. So now that you have both sides pinned I want you to take the edges and the sides so I want you to put them together like this and then you want to make a small marking about eight centimeters from this side. So why we are doing this? We are preparing for our slit so this is how we are going to do it. Actually instead of eight let's do nine a little bit more so somewhere here. So while I'm holding all fabrics together. I will just go ahead and make a very very small cut, make a very small notch. Just wanted to show you again how many layers we are cutting with and these Kai scissors just went right through it without any hesitation. So really small scissors, great power. So now what we are going to do, so we will start overlocking from the sleeves and we will move down. We always remove the pin before the needle and the overlock hits them. And I want you to continue to overlock until this notch. And once you reach that notch, you simply drive away. Clip. And now open this part like this and we will overlock this entire slit. Pay attention what I'm doing. So I'm straightening that slit and I'm running through the overlock. So here is how the entire side looks like now. So we have sewed our overlock till this notch and then we overlocked the slit. Now I want you to do the same thing with the other side. Before moving to the straight stitch machine I want you to do one last thing for me with our overlock today and we will let him rest after this task. So I will remove the free arm because I will not need it and now I will We'll take that cuff that we made, remember, like this. So from the wrong side of the garment, I will just clip this because it looks very annoying. <laughs> from the wrong side of this garment, I will take my cuff, so open side in this way, I will put it here so the seams match and I will just put it through overlock. Now remember, because our cuff was slightly smaller than the sleeve, we will have to stretch our cuff while we're sewing. So let me just go ahead and show you. So right, when you're sewing, you're making sure that the edges match and then you're slightly, slightly pulling this cuff so that it beautifully fits into the sleeve. 
I really love to do the cuffs without the free arm because it's just much, much easier to reach narrow spaces. So it will look like this. So now finish the other cuff the same way and I will meet you at the straight stitch machine. So now we switch to our straight stitch machine and it's time to finish our slits. So I want you to take your measuring tape and the chalk and I want you to measure from this edge six centimeters. Six centimeters will be our slit and also mark exactly the same from another side. So from the edge, six centimeters. So now I want you to go ahead and start making a seam somewhere here. You want the seam to start exactly at the edge of the overlock and then go all along this overlocked edge to the mark base. So once you've finished that, I want you to take the garment now from the right side up, right? So this is the right side facing us. Now take your slit like this and just roll that overlocked edge like this. Put it under the sewing machine and make a stitch like this. It's about six millimeters or something like this. The overlocked edge is folded, right? And we're sewing till the slit. So once we reach the slit, the needle is pushed inside the fabric. You lift the foot and rotate the fabric by 90 degrees. Then you make a few stitches like this. Then again, the needle is pushed to the fabric, you lift the foot, you rotate the fabric by 90 degrees and then you continue to do the same with another side of the slit. So I will just trim unnecessary threads and show you the result. So here is how our slit looks like from the right side of the garment. Of course, it needs pressing. No worries, we will go through this. And from the wrong side of the garment, it looks like this, still pretty clean. So I want you to do exactly the same with another slit. So once your slits are finished, we have one more seam left to do with our straight stitch machine. Don't worry, this will be the last stitch with this machine machine for today. So I want you to take your cuffs. So here is the wrong side of the garment and here is the right side. So we will do top stitching and we will be securing this overlocked seam so that it stays neatly on the sleeve part, not on the cuff side. So basically like this, so the seam allowance is pushed to the sleeve part. We will now push it under our sewing machine and we will do a simple stitch one millimeter from the edge. The overlocked seam stays in place, does not roll out, does not fold and just looks beautifully and neat. So when you're sewing, just make sure that the seam allowance is pushed to this side, okay? So here is how the finished result looks like. So here you can see the top stitching and here you can see that the seam allowance is on the sleeve side. So repeat the same with another cuff and then we have the absolutely last step of our shirt making process which is to add buttonholes and buttons. So I will meet you at the next sewing machine. 
So the very last thing that we will do today is to add our buttonholes and for making the buttonholes I have my Zinger Heavy Duty 442 sewing machine prepared. Everything is set. So I have here the buttonhole foot. All these settings are set already for my buttonholes and depending on the sewing machine that you have for this purpose it will be either a one-step buttonhole or a four-step buttonhole in my case it is a one-step buttonhole so now we will add buttonholes and we will add buttonholes to this placket so I went ahead and already marked but it's slightly invisible <laughs> on the camera so I went ahead and marked places where I want my buttonholes to be so now about the buttonholes itself on the polo shirt here is one nuance so the top buttonhole has to be horizontal and the rest has to be vertical so I will add only two buttonholes today so the top one will be horizontal and the second one will be vertical so I will go ahead and just do them So the first buttonhole is finished and we will now do the second one. Well, ideally I would do the second buttonhole slightly higher, but because this place is pretty bulky, my sewing machine cannot reach this. So I will do just a little bit lower. And now remember the second buttonhole, the top buttonhole has to be horizontal. So here is how my buttonholes look like before I cut through them. So through cutting my buttonholes I will switch to even smaller scissors and this time I will be using high scissors 4.5 inch scissors which is the smallest scissors in the 7000 lineup. Now 7000 lineup means that these beautiful scissors will probably last you a lifetime if you take good care of them and we really now need that extra power to cut through all these layers without damaging our buttonholes and these small scissors will do exactly that because while they are small they are very powerful and they give very precise results also because again we are working with the hardened steel scissors means that they will stay sharp for a very long time and they will not become dull so let's put these little scissors to the real test Okay, well this is really, really smooth. So the cutting is effortlessly and really the results are fantastic. I wish you could feel through this video how easy it is to cut with these scissors because it's really, really so smooth and so effortlessly cutting through so many layers at one time it's really fantastic so i will also link these scissors at the description box and make sure you check them out if you are in the need of a small but very powerful cutting tool so now that we have our buttonholes ready i will go ahead and i will iron my entire polo shirt i will give it a very very good final press then later i will add my buttons by hand and then i will show you the final result So this is it for today's sewing class and I hope you really enjoyed it. I personally love making polo shirts and I hope that you 
also fell in love with this sewing process. Once again, I want to thank for Kai Scissors for sponsoring this video. If you are looking for high quality scissors that will last you a lifetime, make sure to check Kai Scissors and I will link them down below. Thank you again for watching today's video and I will see you next time. Bye!